Hey guys, so behind me is my shop. And yes, if you've been with me for a while on this channel, you've seen when this was nothing. I have a shop video where I detailed for four months how we built this thing. And in that, well, I started cladding the walls with plywood and making French cleats all over the place. Every once in a while when you do that, you put things where they absolutely have to go instead of where they really should go. And now that I've got this thing organized a bit more, it's time to do that. So in this video, I'm gonna take you along and show you some minor shop workflow improvements. Real life, everyone. Come on, man. Look at this. This is what happens. Yeah. <laughs> All right, sometimes you film intros in real life happens okay anyway back to this I've done some improvements on where my workflow needed to be uh, reason being is that oh, you coming out oh, no. what's wrong I'll be right there <laughs> okay all right Okay, so back to this. This shop started having plywood walls, and in that process, I started putting cleats up and then bringing in things from my last shop back to this one. And that was great because I was able to instantly put a French cleat system. Ladies and gentlemen, my daughter. Hello, baby. Anyway, I was putting French cleats kind of up where they absolutely had to go, not really where they needed to go. And so that being said, I've done some minor shop improvements here. So join me along for this. Sorry for this crazy intro. Um, yeah, sometimes this is real life. I figured I'd leave it in the video and show you. Anyway, without further ado, like I said before, <laughs> let's go. So this workbench, multi-storage workbench, is just kind of getting out of hand. Yes, these cubbies are great. However, they need to be organized just a bit more. You can see here, I've kind of got a mess of hardware. So in order to do so, I'm gonna take some quarter inch plywood and I'm gonna cut it down into these three inch strips. I'm then gonna take those strips and cut them down to length to fit the width of one of those cubbies. Making sure everything is just dialed in. I don't want it to be too, too tight. Just right is good. Once I have my measurements, I go ahead and cut six of these. I'm going to do the same thing with those strips on the vertical sides. And I'm going to cut six of those as well. Now I'm going to remove some material halfway up each of these pieces. That way they interlock. And using these two stop blocks on the cross cut sled, really going to make quick work of this. I test the fit, it's actually a little too tight. Then I sneak back this little stop block here, tighten it down, make a few cuts or one more cut, and then the fit seems to be just right. Once I know the measurement is correct, I can double these pieces up and make two cuts at once. And these are the horizontal partitions. And again, I've got two other cuts I have to make on the vertical partitions as well. One, two, and I've set those stop blocks up just right so everything fits together nice and flush. So these boxes are great for storage, but they're a little too large for what I need them for. I've got smaller pieces of hardware that I wanna store on the top shelf of that storage unit. And these partitions are really going to help me turn six larger storage box into 24. And I'm going to hold them in place with one brad on two sides. You can see there, it's not going anywhere. Just be careful and line up your shot. That way you don't get any blowout. Okay, now it's time to organize some of this mess. Now, the idea here is that if it's a pan head screw, it's going to join its other components. So if I have four different style of pan head screws, I'm going to put them in that box alone. And then if it's a standard wood screw, maybe with a countersink, then I'm going to use that as well. So like items are going to be stored together. Every maker is different. So do what you need to do that works best for you. This just happens to work well for me. However, I loaded these up and I shouldn't have done that just yet because I got a little bit of an issue and I'll explain it just right here. Well, because I didn't think this through, um, I've got to turn these up to staple the representation of what's in here. And, I, you know, everything's going to spill out. So, simple solution. Just a piece of scrap. 
and then a piece of blue tape, and now I'm good to go. <laughs> anyway, yeah, that should work. So you might think, well, couldn't you have done that horizontally? Well, to get the pressure on the piece of hardware and lining it up, really, I needed to do it vertically to give me the best result. And putting that piece of scrap in there, really not that big a deal. So this is this project complete. Check that out. All new organization for the top shelf. And now it's time to move on to an oldie but goodie of mine. I love using these magnet strips for storage. And I'm going to show you just how we do it this time around. So I'm going to link down below a video I did a couple years ago about using French cleats and magnet strips. However, this is definitely an evolution of that. If you want to see where I've been and now where I'm going with this, I'll link that video, like I said, so check it out. So this process is going pretty simple. I mean, you just cut down some Baltic bursts to the length you need based upon the actual magnet strip that you have. And two of them are going to be identical, but the third one I'm going to make is gonna have these, well, these little wedges in there. Now, these wedges were cut from a previous build, I believe a dining table build, that used some legs, and essentially I got that from there. And after I've got those wedges cut, I'm then gonna turn my attention to cut down a piece of quarter inch plywood. Now it's time to finish off some of these edges with a quarter inch round over bit, just kind of making sure everything is nice and flush to the touch. I come back and sand them as well, and I hand sand all these pieces too. I do like pieces to feel good, even if it is Baltic birch and even if it is plywood, I get it. I do like to sand everything down, and of course, that's kind of my MO. And here is a perfect example of CA glue or super glue being used as a tool in my shop. I really think it's an essential tool in any maker's shop. And of course, I'm always going to tell you guys that I'm going to affiliate with Starbond and I love their stuff. Links are down below. You can save 15%. I know I sound like a broken record with this sometimes. But you know what? There's a reason for it is because the stuff's awesome. So go check it out. So CA glue is very versatile. It has many different uses in the shop. I do wanna know your thoughts. If you'd like to see how I use it in multiple different facets in the shop, leave me a comment below. I would be more than happy to make a video on that, but I just wanna make sure that it would be adding value to what you guys get out of this channel. So let me know. I wanna know your thoughts. So you saw me install these three wedges in between two pieces of plywood, and now it's time to give it a little bit of a trim on the table saw. Reason being, this is gonna be the base that's gonna accept another piece of plywood that's gonna protrude out by about two inches or so. You're gonna see here, I'm gonna do the same technique with some CA glue, activator, and then I'm gonna come back and reinforce that joint with a few flush trim screws as well. These screws are actually pretty cool. They leave minimal footprint where they are and they're really strong so if you don't have these use them in your shop they're great now this is an experiment i don't have any black panhead screws so i'm taking some of these that are zinc coated i believe and i'm just going to torch some of the blow torch so they're piping red then once they're cooled down i'm going to scrape them off with a little bit of a wire brush and they turn a pretty cool looking almost dark brown black color which i think is going to blend with this aesthetic which necessarily well Honestly, it's not necessary. You can absolutely put silver screws in this. However, I actually had some countersunk black screws available. Why did I didn't just use those in the first place? I don't know, but I'm using them here now. So you can ignore the fact that I just torched some screws or you can't, it's up to you. <laughs> so here's some French cleat stock that I have lying around. It's basically a piece ripped at 45 degrees and it's about three and a half inches thick. I'm gonna cut these into three inch pieces and then turn them perpendicular to cut them this way, but I need to protect my hands. So one of these really jumbo sized pencils will do nicely. Thanks, Jimmy. A pencil eraser is actually a pretty handy tool on the table saw, especially when cutting small pieces in and around the blade. It works really well, just be careful. And of course, this step is pretty gratuitous, but I don't think it is. I think when you take the time to make everything that you make pretty nice, at least feel to the touch, I think it adds a level of pride to each project. Even though no one's gonna see this, unless you're watching this video, I think it's a good step. And to install these cleats, I'm gonna put them on both corners of the top of each piece. I'll give you a better look here, a little activator CA glue again, and it goes on just like this. I'm gonna reinforce these as well though with some screws, but the bottom pieces, you really don't have to. They're not gonna be taking the load. Those are just there to give you some support. So after running inside just for a bit, I have company. You can open it. Good job. All right, let's go build stuff. <laughs> 
And here are the screws I mentioned earlier to give these things just a bit more support. And I'm gonna repeat this process on all of the cleats I'm making today. Okay. Also, here's the one that What's is on? angled just a little bit. But, hold on. Oh, I'm glad. You want me to fix it? Yeah, yeah, it yeah, it feels better. Yeah, it feels better? That's good. You want me to fix it? Oh, you okay? All right, here you go. Here you go. Oh, no. Oh, no, what? What happened? That's for you. Daddy, it's your turn. Oh, it's my turn. Okay, it's my turn. Truth be told, I know like one trick and it came back like riding a bike, no joke. Yes, it's my turn, so what can I do? Mm. Okay, maybe like two tricks. We do walk the dog. <laughs> you know, every once in a while, there's moments that happen in these videos that I don't predict and I don't plan. And that was another one. If you've been a fan of the channel, you've seen them in previous videos and that was pretty neat. So, all right, back to this. We're gonna just install these cleats. And of course I gotta wind it up one more time. But again, same process, little CA glue and some screws. And this is the, cleat holder that has that little bit of an angle on it. So now it's time to install them and I'm gonna show you how I'm gonna use them. So as you see me install these pieces in the new area, I'm gonna show you the old area and why I was motivated to do this. Now, this is too high up. There isn't enough storage here and I have to really reach over things to get to them. But with this new system, it's where my workbench is, right behind it, and I've got the magnets protruding out. Why is that? Because things like this, like this drill brush, can't mount flush to a magnet unless it sticks out from the wall by about an inch and a half. In case you have things like this, it really does make it handy to bring those magnets away from the wall a little bit, which gives you more versatile storing options. You know, it's summer here still in Florida, and she's just staying cool, even though I'm her biggest fan. So as you see me installing things up on the wall, getting things organized, I'm gonna to explain to you guys why I made this thing here at the bottom. It's angled a little bit, plus it has a shelf. Now why is that? Well, it's gonna hold really heavy items and kind of, kind of particular items. You see those crescent wrenches are fairly large and also these 10 snips are kind of funky if they just sit up on a magnet, but if they have somewhere to rest, they're good to go. And this is nice, peace of mind, knowing these things are up on the wall pretty secure. Also, I will say this, I got these magnets from Harbor Freight and they work really well. So if you wanna grab some for yourself, that's where you need to go. And off camera, I installed one underneath one of my modular French cleat shelves and it's gonna be where I'm gonna keep all of my impact bits and a couple of really long or four really long drill bits as well. If you don't have really long drill bits, I recommend going to your big box store and picking up a set. They come in super handy. And with that, the tools are up on the wall, really nice and neat. They're probably not gonna stay that way, but I wanna bring some other things back from my last shop into this one along this wall. Here is one of the older French cleats that I have a magnet on from the original video, and I'm just gonna install this and put a pair of, put some scissors on there. Now this, I didn't plan this. You see the curvature from the bits from left to right? It matches the screwdrivers on this previously made holder. I swear to you, that was a happy accident. <laughs> I have no reason to lie to you. It's almost like I did this on purpose, but I didn't, I swear. No joke. <laughs> and this is something else I made, kind of a blast from the past, a compression fit micro screwdriver holder set. That was kind of a cool little adaptation for a French cleat wall as well. So when you enter my shop, this is the new left-hand side wall. And I like it because all of this stuff is right behind me when I'm working at my workbench. Well guys, that's it for this video. This is one of those videos where, you know, I was debating whether I make this or not. And honestly, this community in woodworking is all about sharing different tips and tricks and various different things that help us in each other's workflows that may, may be able to help someone else. So that's kind of where I'm going with this. And since this is my main workbench I work with, it's got the dog holes. This is an armor tool workbench. Uh, of course, this video is not sponsored, but I will link them down below. They did send me this a couple years ago, and it's really come in handy. So that's it. This made sense for me. I hope it makes sense for you so you can see what this is. But the main thing I wanted to stress to you guys, especially about the French cleat system, is that 
it goes where it has to at first, where you're building your cleats up. And then as you keep the system going around your shop, then you can place things where they need to go. And right now, they need to go here. Who knows, in a couple months, this area of the shop may completely transform. And we'll see. But you have to stay tuned for that. Thanks for joining me, guys. Take care.